Welcome to the video tutorials of the book Methods, Evaluation and Research in Education by Muhammad Attaruzzaman and today we are going to learn how to do factor analysis in SPSS. Using factor analysis one can produce a small number of factors from a large number of variables which is capable of explaining the observed variance in the larger number of variables. It is based on the concept of correlation. Let's go to an example. A researcher is interested to investigate the reasons of choosing a university for education. Several variables were identified which influence the individuals, guardians or students, for example, to choose a university. Some of the variables identified as being influential include cost of education, quality of education, availability of experts, and modern laboratories, having own campus with security, number of years operating, number of graduates in job and abroad, international recognition and accommodation and food. From this, he designed a questionnaire to solicit individuals' view on a seven-point scale where one is equal to not important and seven is equal to very important. The results are kept in a file called factor analysis. Considering this scenario, now we are going to do the factor analysis in SPSS. Let's check out the SPSS data editor window at the screen. Now go to file, then open data, and then data file under SPSS evaluation folder and open the file named factor analysis in the SPSS data editor. Yeah, it's opened. The file is shown in SPSS editor in the data view. Let's check out the variable view of the data. There are eight variables you see V1, V2, V3, till V8 which are of numerical type and in ordinal scale of measurement. In the label column the variables are described explicitly. For example, uh, variable V1 represents the cost of education. In the values column, you have to define the seven point scale, which is which means actually one for not important and seven for very important. You don't have to define the scale in each cell under values column. Rather, you just write one time and then copy it and paste it where it is required. Now, go back to the data view of the SPSS data editor. You see the variables at the top of each column and also see the opinions of the 12 respondents on these 8 variables. Each respondent has to go to each of the variables and give their opinions on the 7 point scale just by providing a number from 1 to 7 in any cell under a column. You can change the data view pattern by clicking the value labels icon which is third from the right at the toolbar just below the menu bar. Now let's go to the analyze menu. Yeah, go to the analyze menu, then data reduction. Yeah, just look for data reduction, then factor analysis. Select all the eight variables. Yeah, select it and click the arrow button to take all of them from left to right. Click the descriptives button and select all of them except inverse, reproduce and anti-image. Yeah. Click continue. Now click extraction button and select the method as principal components. Scree plot in the display and set the eigenvalues over 1. Do not forget to select the correlation matrix in analyze. Again click rotation button and select the method as Farimax. Now click Options button and select Sorted by Size and set Suppress Absolute Values less than 0.5 in the coefficient display format. Now click Continue and then press OK. Yeah, wait for a while. See the output at the screen. From the output viewer, the following tables are extracted for interpretation. 1. KMO and Bartlett's test, 2. Commonalities, 3. Total variance explained, 4. Scree plot, 5. Rotated component matrix. So, let's see the interpretation. Number 1. From the KMO and Bartlett's test, 
it is observed that the measure of sampling adequacy is 0.417, which is less than 0.5. The sampling adequacy should be greater than 0.5. It leads the researcher either to collect more data or rethink which variables to include. Bartlett's measure test the null hypothesis that the original correlation capital R matrix is an identity matrix. It implies all correlation coefficient would be zero. For factor analysis to work, we need some relationships between variables and the R matrix should not be an identity matrix. It is only possible when the significance value is less than 0 0.05. For this data, Bartlett's test is significant and therefore factor analysis is appropriate as the value is less than 0 0.05. Hence, it is not at all an identity matrix. 2. The commonalities table show the commonalities before and after extraction. Principal component analysis works on the initial assumption that all variance is common. Therefore, before extraction, the commonalities are all one. And after extraction, some of the factors are discarded, and so some information is lost. The amount of variance in each variable that can be explained by the retained factors is represented by the commonalities after extraction. For instances, 91.8% of the variance in international recognition is accounted for by the extracted factor. 3. The total variance explained table lists the eigenvalues associated with each linear component factor before extraction, after extraction, and after rotation. Remember, rotation has the effect of optimizing the factor structure and one consequence for these data is that relative importance of the three factors is equalized. It is observed from the variances accounted for by the three factors before rotation, 46.36%, 18.47%, and 17.01%. And on the other side, after rotation, there are 31.26%, 25.56% and 25.02%. 4. One important decision in factor analysis is the number of factors to be extracted. Here, the number of variables is less than 30 and the commonalities after extraction are greater than 0 0.7. So, these factors are extracted having eigenvalues above 1. 5. The component factor matrix table shows the loadings of the eight variables on the three factors extracted. The higher the absolute value of the loading, the more the factor contributes to the variable. The gap on the table represents loadings that are less than 0.5. This makes reading the table easier. We suppressed all loadings less than 0.5. However, from the interpretation point of view, the rotated component matrix sorted by size is better than the simple component matrix. Let's see the rotated component matrix at a closer look. Extraction method, which is principal component analysis, rotation method, which is Varimax with Kaiser normalization, rotation converged in seven iterations. It is observed that number of graduates in job and abroad number of years operating, international recognition, and having own campus with security are substantially loaded on factor 1, where availability of experts and modern laboratories, having own campus with security, and accommodation and food are substantially loaded on factor 2. And last but not least, international recognition, cost of education, and quality of education are substantially loaded on factor 3. Let's see the final interpretation. Now, look at the content of questions that load onto the same factor to try to identify common themes. 
the questions that load highly on factor 1 seem to all relate to stability and prospects of a university. The questions that load highly on factor 2 seem to all relate to facilities provided by a university. Finally, the questions that load highly on factor 3 seem to all relate to cost-benefit analysis of studying in a university. This analysis seems to reveal that the initial questionnaire in reality is composed of three subscales, which are stability and prospects, facilities and cost-benefit analysis. These three constructs may be the subcomponents of the main construct, basic of choosing a university. The process of factor analysis is not very tough, but making appropriate interpretation from the analysis is a complex task. However, I hope that you have learned factor analysis to some extent. Practice on different data sets for better understanding the process. Thank you for staying with us. It's Yastani saying you goodbye.